about the Lord Jesus Christ. Who has believed our report? I have. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? To the farmer's market in Daytona Beach. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root of dry ground. He has no form or comeliness. And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. You won't find the face, picture of Jesus on the cover of your magazines. You won't find the face of Jesus of a poster. The Bible says that Jesus in his appearance was not beautiful. But Jesus is beautiful to me as my Savior. As a child of God. But to the world, Jesus is not beautiful. To the world, you don't care about Jesus. To the world, you don't want to hear about Jesus. And to the world, you don't want to see Jesus. You do perfectly fine if the preaching of Jesus was not happening. You would do perfectly fine if there was no Jesus. You can continue in your sins and enjoy your sins if there was no Jesus. He is despised and rejected of men. Where? At the farmer's market? The vendors of the farmer's market? The customers? Of those who will not put their faith and trust and reject it of Jesus, the Bible says of you in Isaiah 53, verse 3, he's despised and rejected of men. So when you reject Jesus Christ, you are proven to me that Scripture is correct. Thank you for proving to me that Scripture is correct. Don't be a despiser. Don't reject Jesus Christ. Acquainted with grief, and we hid as were our faces from him. He despised, and we esteemed him not. You don't want to have anything to do with Jesus. You don't want Jesus a part of your life. You would do fine if that preacher with the Bible would drop dead. It would be interesting if God would have the preacher drop, drop dead if he said the louder preacher. Everybody going to heaven is a lie according to the scriptures. Because there are people who despise and reject and they don't care about Jesus. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. And yet we did extreme him stricken smitten of God afflicted. He suffered and died according to the scriptures. He was wounded for our transgressions. It is you, the sinner, why Jesus was beaten and punched. They beat the crap out of Jesus because of your sin. Pilate said of Jesus, I find no fault. I find no fault. I find no fault. Herod, I find no fault. Judas, I have betrayed the innocent blood. And yet Jesus Christ suffered and died according to the scriptures because you are the sinner that Jesus Christ suffered and died for. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. The Lamb of God, 
which take away the sin of the world is in Jesus Christ. And in Jesus Christ, you can be cleansed. You can be healed. You can be right with God. Through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Through the beatings of Jesus Christ. Through the whippings of Jesus Christ. The fist punching Jesus. The whips whipping Jesus. Because of our sins. Our iniquities. Jesus Christ was beaten to a bloody pulp and mess. Jesus Christ suffered for us, the sinner. God in the flesh had his flesh torn to pieces that we might come to God and be saved. And we were to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and to be saved. If we with our heart to believe, with our mouth to confess, salvation. He was oppressed and was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before his shearers. is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Jesus didn't cry, give me a lawyer. Jesus did not call upon the legion of angels. Jesus didn't even call one angel. Jesus Christ willingly laid down his life. Jesus was willingly punched in the face. Jesus was willingly had his beard pulled. Now, friend, I've had my beard pulled, and it ain't fun. When a man has a beard and his beard is pulled, man, he wants to swing a fist. The Bible says they pulled the hair out of Jesus' face. The Bible says they punched him in the face. The Bible says they whipped him with a cat of nine tail. For you, the sinner, Jesus, God, suffered and died according to the scriptures. And according to the scriptures, one of the places of the scriptures is Isaiah 53. And you know what the Bible says in Isaiah 53? You don't care. Many don't care. Broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many go thereat. Many people don't care about Jesus. And many people will not go to heaven. Because they won't come to Jesus. But straight is the gate that leads to life. And the few that find thereat. The few that walk thereat. If you despise and reject Jesus. How on earth do you think Jesus is going to allow you into heaven? But the Bible says if you despise and reject Jesus, Jesus will say to you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. You know, it is a fact that the people of the farmer's market don't want to hear the preaching. And they tried all means of legal and police to get rid of the preaching. They don't want the preaching here. They despise Jesus. And yet the Supreme Court of the United States and the Constitution of this country says, I have the right to be here. I have the right to preach the gospel. Despise what you hate. Despise what you don't care about. I 
I'd be here even if there wasn't a constitution. I'd be here if the law says I couldn't be here. Because I love Jesus. I want my mouth to proclaim Jesus. Despised and rejected of men. He was taken out of prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? I will. For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Again, our sins nailed Jesus Christ to the cross. Our guilt was placed upon the guiltless one. The Lamb of God who never sinned shall take away the sin of the world. The precious blood of Jesus Christ without spot cleanse me of my sins. And he can cleanse you of your sins if you stop rejecting him. Because if you continue to reject him and you reject Jesus to your death, and when you stand before Jesus one day, Jesus will tell you, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. But Jesus, I went to church, so what? The church didn't die on the cross. Jesus, I was baptized. The dying thief wasn't baptized and he went to paradise. Well, Jesus, every Saturday morning I had to hear that preacher. Well, that preacher can't save you. He had a saving message, but he couldn't save you. You listen in vain. And how you listen in vain is you heard the preacher preach about Jesus. You heard that Jesus saved. You heard to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you didn't do it. You listen in vain. He made his grave with the wicked and with the rich his death. He died between two thieves. He died for my sins. Being innocent. God being innocent died for your sins. And Jesus never sinned. Jesus is holy and pure and right. And yet he died for you. The Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. You know what that Lamb was? It was the Passover Lamb. Once a year, the Jewish people had to kill a Passover Lamb. That Passover Lamb did nothing. The Passover Lamb was innocent. And yet that Passover shed its blood for the Jewish people. Jesus Christ was innocent. Jesus Christ is God. And Jesus Christ shed his blood. That you and I might be saved. April 25th, I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. In 1987, an 18-year-old punk got saved. An 18-year-old vile, wicked sinner got saved. Involved in drugs, involved in alcohol, involved in womanizing, involved in bracing, involved in all wicked lewdness and wicked unlawfulness. On April 25th, 1987, at my grandmother's coffee table, I knelt down the King James Bible and I asked Jesus Christ to save me. And he saved me. I came out of the Catholic Church and I got saved. I grew up for 18 years a Polish Roman Catholic. Now that's not a joke. I don't know what is. On April 25th, 1987, I met Jesus. I was told I was going to hell. I didn't want to go to hell. I put my faith and trust in Jesus. April 26, 1987, I began preaching about hell. I began preaching about Jesus. And I've been doing it ever since. 
34, 35 years I've been saved. And I've only been saved through church. I go to church because I'm saved, not to be saved. I was baptized as a testimony of salvation, not for salvation. I preach not for salvation. I preach because I'm saved. And to Jesus Christ, I give all honor and glory. To Jesus Christ, one and all, and the all in one. Upon the hill of Calvary, according to the scriptures, Jesus Christ suffered and died. And they buried him as you would with any dead body. That wasn't in Jesus' tomb. It was a borrowed tomb. It was a rich man, Joseph of Artemia, gave Jesus his tomb. And they put a seal in that tomb. And the rock was rolled away. That's the first rock and roll. The first rock and roll wasn't music. Kicking that rock out of the way, Jesus coming out of that grave saying, here I am. And God had an angel proclaim, according to the scriptures, he's not here. He is risen. And the scriptures say, you can too, you too, can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. You can know God. You can know Jesus. And you can go to heaven. Through Jesus Christ. And without Jesus Christ, there's no hope. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the blessed hope. It's plain and simple to see that Jesus saves. And only Jesus saves. Come to Jesus and believe and be saved. And know that there is light, eternal light, being offered at Calvary. That eternal life is in Jesus. And Jesus Christ alone. There's no hope in you being good when the Bible says there's none that do it good. Because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Jesus was sinless, without sin, holy and right and true. That can't be said about you. You're a sinner, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous. No, not one. We are the sinners. And God is the Holy One. And we, the unholy, believe we're going to go to heaven without the holy. Impossible. When Jesus Christ said he is the way, the truth, and the life, there is no access to God the Father. But through Jesus Christ. No greater hope than the hope that's in Jesus Christ. 